Hashem. Okay, welcome. We are in Pirkei Avos, Perek Aleph, Mishnah Zayin, Hasdei Hashem Isbarach. And um, we're now on the, on the second side of the Zub. Right, so as we've been describing, as we've been going through this whole flow, is that there is a, there's a, there's a, there's a dynamic of a love and a, a Ava and a Yira relationship which takes place. The, the beginning of the Mishnah was all in one person, it was all Antigonus, and then as we go down the generations, it's in the Zugos. What we've been discussing the last time and what we're going to discuss today is the relationship with other people. We spoke about one's own inner world, one's home, and now we're about other people. And Yeshua ben Prachia in the last mission, he was speaking about relationships with other people and how to connect to them in a deep way and how to use that as a basis for learning how to love Hashem through relationships with others. And that was all in the positive because it was speaking about Ava. And now we're moving on to Nitai Har Be'eli, who he's the flip side. He's also discussing ultimately about how to have Yiras Hashem, to come close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But he's discussed, and that's through other people, through how to relate to other people. But he's discussing it on the Yira, Yira Sashem aspect, and therefore it's all going to be Lota says, what not to do. These are all things you have to remove it yourself from. Okay, now, we're going to have a number of basic questions on this Mishnah. Now, question number one is, the, 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 what is the first two seem to be the same, basically the same thing. Distance yourself from a bad neighbor. Don't connect yourself to a bad person. Don't marry a bad person's daughter. Don't do business with a bad person. Don't connect to bad people. Say it in one phrase. Why do you need a double phrase? The third one seems to be not connected to anything. Don't give up hope if things don't go the way you want them to. That's nothing to do with how to relate to other people. That doesn't seem to have to do with Yerat Shamayim. This is, or not in this context of how to relate to other people and use that to relate to Hashem. So question number one, the first two seem to be the same. Question number two, the third one seems not to be connected. And what's the flow between all three of them? Question number three is, and we've been medaiking this all the way through is, whenever it speaks about an object and it gives an adjective, then you always have to be marked with to see which one it used for which person. So by Shachain Ra, by a bad neighbor, it used the word harcheik, distance yourself. And by rasha, it used the word altitchaber, don't connect yourself. And by puranot, and by challenging situations, it says altitya'ish. That's the three. Now, if, let's go through it slowly. Shachen ra, bad neighbor, harcheik, is active. You should actively distance yourself. Whereas by rasha, it says altitchaber. You shouldn't attach yourself, meaning it's passive. Don't go and attach yourself. So here there's a beautiful insight, which is just strengthening our question. This is not an insight. This is, this is strengthening the question of the Chosid Yaivetz, the found in the library. He says, there's a pasuk in Yeshayahu Peregimu, which is based on, and it's brought in the Gemara in Kedushin Daf Mem Amad Aleph, which darshans the pasuk, and the pasuk says, Oi la ra. And the Gemara, and the Gemara asks, what does it mean, Rasha Ra? What does it mean, Rush, isn't a Rasha always Ra? So the Gemara there makes a diuk. But the diuk that the Chassid Yaivetz makes from that question is, you see by the fact that it asks, isn't a Rasha always Ra? Means that Rasha is worse, and Ra is not as bad in respect to Rasha. Because if Ra was worse, then it wouldn't have a question, isn't a Rasha always Ra? Right? The fact that it asks, Oi la Rasha Ra means, that Ra is incorporated within a Rasha. That means if we have these two phrases of the word Ra, someone who's bad and someone who's a Rasha, then based on the Gemara and Kedush and Mem, a Rasha is worse. So now that strengthens our question now. We, our question we were asking is, why does it use the word Harcheik from a Shachin Ra? Distance yourself from a Shachin Ra. But Al Titchaber Rasha. So who's worse between the two? According to the Gemara and Kedush, a Rasha is worse. So it should say, Harcheik mi rasha. If it's telling you to distance yourself, it should say, distance yourself from the more harsh person, from the worst person, from the more evil one. So we're talking about two different people here, someone who's called a Shachein Ra and someone who's called a Rasha. If based on the Gemara and Kedushna, Rasha is worse, it should really have put Harcheik with the Rasha. 
This is your son from the Russia. Okay. So what's the flow between all three? What's the difference between a Shachenra and a Russia? Why does it use the word Harcheik for Shachenra and the word Altit Chaber for the Russia? What's the last phrase Bichral doing there of Altit Yaish Mina Puranut? What's, what's, the, what's the relevance of that phrase? How does it connect to the flow? Those are the questions that are going to accompany us in our flow here in this mission. So we mentioned, and, and, what we, and what we opened with was the Maharal who says this is going to teach us the Yisod of Yiras Hashem. Yiras Hashem through how to relate to other people. Okay. I'm going to start with the commentary of Rabbeinu Yonah because he gives her an unbelievable Yisod. And then from there, we'll go on and we'll develop the idea until we get one full, like, full all-encompassing idea, which will hopefully give us a great understanding of it. This is Rabbeinu Yonah, and this is on the second phrase, Al Titchaber Rasha. Why shouldn't you attach yourself to a, an evil person? He says like this. Listen how harsh his language is. Hu onesh gadol she'en kamoto. This is the most severe punishment. That there's nothing parallel to it. Now, why is attaching oneself to a Rasha most severe than nothing like it? Ki achet hachamur. Impashabo, the most severe sin that you could ever think of if you did it intentionally, asa vera achat. It's still only one sin. Avalzeh, but attaching oneself to Russia, which isn't even an avera in and of itself, but so what is it exactly? It's worse than any avera. Why? Avalzeh, the kol avera choseha rasha, with all the averas the Russia does. If you attach yourself to a Russia, then the, not you, but the person who would do that, someone who would attach himself to a Russia, he would get the punishment of all the Averas the Russia does, even if he didn't do that. The Russia at least gets the pleasure of eating trade. Okay, he gets punished for it, but at least he gets the pleasure. The person who attaches himself doesn't even get the pleasure in this world, as if it would be worth it. And he gets all the punishment in the next world. So it turns out that the person who attaches himself to a Russia, it's not that he did one sin. He did very many great sins because he gets all the negativity of the Russia. And that's the depth of the phrase, oil Russia, oil Shcheno, woe to the evil one, woe to his neighbor. It doesn't just mean woe to you because you may be influenced by him. It means on a spiritual level, and this Rabbi Yon is based on Avas to Rabbi Yinasan, that's where it's from, the, the, the source. He says, on a deeper level, the, by oneself, one touching oneself to a Rasha, they acquire for themselves all of the punishment that that Rasha is supposed to get. It's not that the Rasha doesn't get it, he also gets it. But this person gains it as well. And that's why it's oi le shcheno, oi avoid to the shachen, because he's getting all... I don't think it's unfair. It works both ways. The kol hamidabek letzadikim. This is the quote from Avos the Rinasa and Perik Lamed Piskid Gimel. The kol hamidabek letzadikim. Afal pi she'enu oseh kama sehem. If you attach yourself to a tzadik, even if you don't do the actions that he does, notel sachar kayot, but you also get the reward that he gets. And now you can see what Hasidus is so deeply rooted in. The concept of Hasidus that you have a Rebbe and you attach yourself to a Rebbe and then even if Hasidus, you are not of the level, you get all the reward that the Rebbe is going to get by attaching yourself to him. And now we're at, are adding on an additional question. This idea from Avas Rabbi Nasan, what does it mean? Why does it make sense? Why is it fair? A person who didn't do anything wrong, he didn't do a single of era but he just became attached to a Russia. He gets all the punishment of that Russia. And on the other hand, it's also unfair. I mean, I'm not complaining, but it's also unfair. If I attach myself to a tzaddik, even though I didn't do any mitzvahs, I'm going to get all the reward of the, that tzaddik. How does that make sense? Like, wh why am I worthy of that? What have I done? Okay. So we've got clarity on the Mahalach. Let's go. Let's go into it now. So I saw it in. He's quite... He's quite uh, Sanua on words <laughs> in this Mishnah, but even having only a couple of words, it gave us the, the, uh, the window, the window of insight to take this idea further. In the Ruach Chaim, Ruach Chaim of Velozhin, he only says a couple of words, but he's going to give us clarity to one answer of, the, of what we asked, 
One question that we asked, and that's going to be the door which is going to take us all the way through. He's coming to identify, his question that he's answering is, what is the difference between a Shachin Ra and a Rasha? That's what he's coming, the one question he's coming to answer. He says, a Shachin Ra is Tov L'Shamayim V'Tzadik, is someone who on a, on a Ben Adam L'Makom level, between him and his service of Hashem, he's a Tzadik, but as a Shachin, Shachin Ra, as a neighbor, Ben Adam L'Chavero, the way that he relates to other people, in that way he's bad. So that's what a Shachin Ra is. And a Rasha, says the Ruach Haim, is someone who could be Tov Labrios. When it comes to Ben Adam L'Chavero, he's fine. He could be a very Ehrlich individual, very noble individual, have great character. But when it comes to fulfilling Hashem's will, as far as Mitzvah is concerned, Shabbos, Kashrus, then Ra L'Shamayim. Then he's, he's an evil person when it comes to Hashem. Now, the Mishnah is telling us that you should, distance your, you should not connect to both these people. Not to be attached to someone who has a great relationship with Hashem, but doesn't do well with others. And not attach yourself to someone who has a great relationship with others, but doesn't attach to Hashem. Now, with that understanding, let's try and go now into understanding the order that it uses and why it says the word Harcheik Bishachenra and why Altit Chaber Rasha. And I'm going to present that with the Yisod that comes first. We're familiar with the idea of Derech Eretz Kadma Torah. But I want to explain that idea now on a deeper level. There are three rings of what makes up man. And right now I'm only going to discuss two of them, but in a moment I'm going to get to the third one at the end of the class here. So let's say you have an initial ring, which is a wide basis, a large, a large circle, which makes up the basic level of man. And then on top of that level, you have a smaller ring. It's not to be smaller, but an additional ring. Let's call it small, actually, which is the second level of man. And on top of that is a third ring, which we'll get to later on, which is the highest level of man. Now, the basic level of man, which makes up man's basic makeup, that's the derech eretz. That's lihiyot adam. That's uh, being a man comes before being a tzaddik and being even higher things. There's a basic level of man, which is the way that he relates to other people. What his inner world is, not in respect of what is a shame, nothing spiritual, how he relates to other people. That's a basic human decency, which is expected of man, even if he wouldn't have Torah and even if he wouldn't have halacha. Avinu goes in to, um, with Sarah and he says, they ask him, why did you lie and say that she's your sister? And he says, because I saw there was no Yerat Shemaim in this town. How did you know there was no Yerat Shemaim? Rashi says there was no Yerat Shemaim. How did you know there was no Yerat Shemaim? Because they asked me about if she's my sister or she's my wife. I mean, what do you mean? They don't have Torah. So why do you expect from them to have good ethics? They don't have Torah. So you see a principle, a concept, that Derech Eretz Kadmala Torah, that even before you've got to the higher ring of Torah, there's a basic ring, which is the basic makeup of man, which is who man basically is, which is the Derech Eret, which is the Liot Adam, just to be a man, which comes first, not the basis. If you ever see that a person has challenge in his relationship with Hashem, you should often check what his relationships with his parents are like or with other people are like, because it could be that his second ring is not stable because he doesn't have the basis of the lower ring, which comes first. It is an order that has to come, and it has to be the basis level comes first, and then the next level of it is Hashem, and then the next level. Which is why also in Chinuch of man, but you don't start talking to children about a high level of mitzvahs when they're very young, until they've reached the age of Chinuch. But you do speak to them about being polite and saying please and thank you, and about, even before the age of Chinuch. Because the basic level of man, of Liyot ben Adam, is the, is the first level and that comes first. Now let's understand the order. First comes Shachenra, and then comes Rasha. This is answering the question of the Chosid Yaivitz. The Chosid Yaivitz asked, surely we know a Rasha is worse. So why is the Shachain Ra first in the order? And why does it say the word Harcheik? So in the order, it, we're building something. There's a process. It says a statement, and it says Va'al, next statement. And then it says Va'al, third statement. There's a process being built here. We have to go in order. The basic level that the Mishnah is building, 
in Yirat Shamayim of what to distance yourself from because it's going to harm you on your basic level of goodness that you built in the last Mishnah is a Shachain Ra. And that's why you need to lahar chik. Because when you're around a neighbor often and you interact with him again and again, then most sensitive is where he interacts with you in a, and speaks in a way which will harm your basic makeup of yourself. And he'll make a joke at someone's expense. And by making that joke at someone's expense, you'll laugh along because you're his neighbor. And then that will eat away and wear away your basic sense of being a Ben Adam, your basic sense of Derech Eretz. Because the nature of man, and this is also a very important yisod, the nat- let me go back a stage. Hashem made man with an achtus. Hashem made the world with achtus. We spoke about this in the last Mishnah. Hashem made man with an achtus. And therefore built in the, in the basic makeup of man is the desire to connect. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu made the world where deeply everything is connected. Deeply there's a harmony of everything in the world. So man has a basic instinct to connect. That's why whenever someone says something to you, an idea that you, heard, that you hear from someone, you think to yourself, do I connect to that? How would I think about that idea? Does that resound with me? Because you're always trying deeply to connect to any idea that you hear or any person that you meet. That's the basic nature of man because Hashem made a world which is in its yisod, it's all one. So in its yisod, you're always trying to connect everything. You're always doing that. So in the last Mishnah, when we're talking about a Rav and a Chaver Tov and being done like Hafsuchot of good people, there it was a very healthy trait. We are always trying to great achdus and to connect deeply. It was very healthy. But now we're teaching you to have Yirat Shamayim. And this point that I'm saying now is phenomenal. This is the Medrash Shmuel. He says, after we learn the last Mishnah, we've developed within ourselves a very strong desire to connect. And we think, connect to everyone and judge them all favorably. So you think of that mission and you're thinking, I love everybody. I love you people. I love people. I love Hashem. I love the world. I love everyone. And then walks in the Russia. And you're saying, I love you, man. And you hug the guy. And you say, but he's a Russia. But no, judge him favorably. He's, he's, he's good and he's neshama inside. He's good. It's true. But that does not mean that you should love him. Sorry, I'll rephrase that. That doesn't mean you should attach yourself to him. Just because in his core essence, he has a pure neshama and you should judge him favorably, judge him favorably, but don't connect to him. That's what the Medjur Shmuel says is the flow of this Mishnah. If you are judging him favorably, then there's a danger that your desire to connect that you're doing, which is a pure good intention, will lead you to a negative place to even connect to people who right now, the interaction with them will be harmful for you. And therefore, now we're learning the difference between love and yira. Love is where you build a relationship. Yira is where you safeguard the relationship. So in the last Mishnah, we were talking about love. Then we were learning how to build, connect to tzaddikim, to connect to chaveirim, judge everyone favorably, building the love, building relationships. But now you have to safeguard it. You have to keep the yira tshamah and keep it intact. And therefore, har chayk mi shachen ra. And on this point, the... Um, Chassid Yaivet says that the nature of man is to be drawn after other people on a basic level. That means that when you meet neighbors again and again, and they're people who are ra, meaning according to the Nefesh Achayim, the Ruach Achayim, they're ra, meaning that they, they make fun of other people and their basic traits are bad and therefore they're ridiculing others and they've got a, ba- a base, not healthy, Ben Adam Lachavero. They don't have the Derech Eretz. So when you interact with them, it's going to eat away your teva. It's going to eat away your core. It's going to eat away your basic level. And from that, you have to be active to run away from. When you go to buy a home, you look at how many rooms the home has, the view it has. More important than that is looking at the spiritual impact it's going to have on you, not just the physical. Therefore, who are the neighbors going to be? And when I meet them on the stairwell, when I meet them in the drive, and I say good morning, are they going to talk about negative things about other people and just throw it my way? I'm going to meet them every single day, and it will etch away and etch away and etch away until it undermines my nature, my good, pure, inner nature that I built in the last Mishnah by Ken Tzadikin. And therefore, basic level number one, har mi shachen ra. From people who their benadam lachavero is bad, run away from them. And now we're building. We've got the basic level intact. Now we're going to the next level. 
Rabbi. The next level is Ben Adam Lach Makom. How you relate to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. How you relate to other people. Now, this level is only once you have a healthy relationship with people, is it going to work for you to start building a relationship with Hashem. If you don't have a healthy interaction with other people, it's not going to be a healthy relationship with Hashem. Because how do you know how to connect to Hashem? How do you know? You can only know that by using the mashalim of this world. And the mashal of this world is how you connect to other people. That's your basis. So you have the basis of Derech Eretz. Then on that, you build the Torah. Now on Torah, the level of Torah, Rabbi? you don't have to run away from Rishayim. You don't have to run away. Because you've already built a solid basis of connecting to people on a good level. And you're avoiding people who speak negatively and are bad people. We're talking here about a Russia who is Ben Adam Lachavero is fine, it's intact. We're talking about a Russia here now, if you relate to him as a friend and you don't talk about philosophy, you don't talk about your, your beliefs, you're going to be fine. You can, he's, going to, he's a mensch, he's a good person, but he's a Russia. He's the Machal al Shabbos, he's not eating kosher. That person you can interact with, you can do a business dealing with. You can go to a shop that he runs and you can buy something for him. It doesn't say you can't interact. You're safe already from the first level. You're safe. You have, ba- you have a good basis. But you shouldn't meet Chaber. Because Tit Chaber is where you're aligning your thoughts with him. It's where you're saying we're going to work as one. We're going to be a unit. And that's where Rebbeinu Yana was saying that once you align yourself with him, you're, and you know that when you align yourself with someone, that it makes, eventually it's going to make you like them, think like them, act like them, be like them, then basically what you're saying to Hashem is, Hashem, I don't mind now entering a relationship which I know eventually will lead to me doing Averis. Hashem does not judge you by the acts that you do. He judges you by your intent, by your will, by your ratzon of where you wish to be. So if a person does an Avera, and they didn't really want to so much. They did it, but they had a strong hate to heart at that point, but they, they regret it. They wish they wouldn't have done it. That's bad. But if they attach themselves to a Russia, then what they're saying is they're aligning their inner will with wickedness. They're saying, Hashem, I'm going to attach myself to someone who I know with time will bring me to an inner alignment with Russia. That, says Rabbeinu Yonah, is what Hashem judges you on. And also for the tzaddik. If, if you, you right now are not on the level of being a tzaddik, but you align yourself with tzaddikim, you're saying, Hashem, my inner will, my inner, inner will, Hashem, is to connect to you deeply. And when you say that to your inner will, Hashem judges you on that. And therefore you get reward for all your desire and your will of what you wish to be. So the basic level is, Derech Eretz Kadamala Torah. And the way that you avoid losing that is, Harchek Mishachenra. The next level is your connection with Torah. Your connection with Torah, you can interact with other people. You can. In fact, the Kodesh Baruch will arrange it. You can't stay in the ghetto. He will make you have to meet and interact with other people because he has an agenda of you inspiring others. But don't you go and make a bond with them. Don't you go and align yourself with them and interact with them in a way that you're chaverim. You can go on a business interaction, but don't afterwards go and drink a tea, coffee together and say, oh, that we did well, let's go and be mitchaber to each other. You can talk in the business room and you say, I'm really happy to relate as far as this business, but not on a social level. We're not, you don't say these words to them, but you make it very, very clear. In the world of business, I relate to you on a business level. I don't relate to you as a friend. If it's a Jew who disregards Torah and disrespects halacha, you can do business with him. If he's a good-natured person, you can do business with him. But you should never get into a friendly discussion with him where you're as equals, connecting as equals, because you're mitchaber. And when you're mitchaber, then you align yourself with the inner world. The highest level, Rabbi? which we haven't discussed until now, let me just finish the flow. The highest level, which we haven't discussed until now, is something of, of the, the most deep point. We have the Derech Eretz, we have the Torah. There's an even higher level. And the highest point, and the reason why I said even that they can, have, they can be wider, is because there are many people who could have Derech Eretz. And there are less people who, as well as Derech Eretz, can build not a level of Torah. And there are even less people who, on that level, can build a Muna. And when I say a Muna here, I mean a live inner connection with Hashem. If you have Derech Eretz, you have a healthy interaction with other people, and you have Torah, you're keeping Halacha, 
then you have a chance of reaching the third level. And that's a chius in Avodos Hashem, an inner point of connection between you and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Only then you'll be able to have the connection. And what holds that back? What do you need to ensure that you have to not to lose that? Right? Each of these are not to lose the inner level. You have a basic goodness, don't have a, naked, a neighbor who's got bad traits because you'll lose it. You have Torah, don't connect to a wicked person because you'll lose it. You want emuna. You want the minute. What causes people to lose their munna? Puranus. When people go through challenges and when people go through hardships and people see things that don't resound with them, they say, Hashem, how could you do this? Hashem, you're a loving, good God. Hashem, are you cruel? Hashem, are you wicked? What are you doing, Hashem? And even if they have Derek Eretz and even if they have Torah, they start asking questions. Hashem, where were you when I needed you? Hashem, how could you allow people to die? Hashem, how could you allow people to suffer? And they feel that Hashem's not with them. And therefore, the answer to that, says the Mishnah, and this is based on the Chassam Sofa, is Al Titya Esh Puranus. Don't give up from, it's so Madaik in the words, don't give up hope from Puranus, meaning don't let Puranus cause you to give up hope, says the Chassam Sofa. Why not? Why, why shouldn't you? And he says like this, he says, if you don't have the basic two levels and you connect yourself to an evil person or a, or a wicked person, then if Hashem sends you punishment, it's stum because you misbehave, because you didn't behave properly, like we saw in Rabbeinu Yonah. You attach yourself to a wicked person and you're getting punishment. That you should be upset about. He said, however, if you've got the first two levels in check, if you've got the midas and you have the tzitkus, then why is Hashem sending you challenges? But one of two reasons, either because he wants to cleanse you in this world, because you've done something wrong and he's giving you the, the punishment to get it out of the way because he loves you, or because you're fine and you're good, he just wants to give you extra reward through having a munna that Hashem still loves you even in hard times. That's called the Yisurim Shal Ava. So says the Chassam Sofa, the highest level, if you wish to connect to the highest level, which is the emunah point of Hashem, you can do it. But what's going to hold you back from it? What well, you need to have Yerat Shamayim from? From Puranus, having an unhealthy perspective towards suffering. Al Titya'esh. If you have the recognition that Hashem loves you and that everything Hashem does, even if it's very challenging, He's doing it for your benefit to connect you deeply, then you have all three levels of the makeup of man. So to conclude, Nitayar Be'eli is coming to teach us how to retain the love connection that we have with Hashem, that we built through other people. You can connect to other people in an unhealthy way and you could lose it. Yirat Shamayim is how to retain it. You retain it on all three levels. Level number one, me interact with people who have good character traits, even if they're not religious. Level number two, don't connect yourself and make a bond with people, even if they have good character traits, but they're wicked people when it comes to Hashem. And number three is your inner world, your inner thoughts, your inner philosophy. If the rub becomes in you because you're bothered by it and you're frustrated by it and you can't understand how Hashem would do that, that's an inner negativity, an inner bad thought, where you're questioning HaKadosh Baruch when that's holding you back from a chiyos and a munna and love in Avodos Hashem, then says the Mishnah, Nitaya Be'eli, that there's no concern. Don't meet Yaesh, because your concern is coming from a question that doesn't seem just, it doesn't seem fair. But if you have a recognition of the way that Hashem works, is that everything Hashem does for you, He does out of love, and He's doing it to help you come even closer to Him. And with that point of the money, you can connect to Kodesh Baruch Hu, protected and surrounded on all three levels. And that's the flow of the three things. Are there any questions on that? Yeah. That answers all of our questions. Question number one was the order of the three and the connection between the three. That answers the other question of why does it say, because that's the nature of man. You have to listen to yourself because it's so, you're so open to it. You're so subject to it. And why it says the word, Altit Chaber Le Rasha. That answers that question also of the, the order that, 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 um, that the Chosad Yavetz asked. And, and, and to connect it back to Kodesh Baruch Hu, the way that you relate to other people is the way that you relate to Hashem. Once you see the other people who are having negativity towards you and you protect yourself from it and you guard the relationship, it's so also in your thoughts. When you see that you have negativity towards the Kodesh Baruch Hu in your thoughts, and you answer those questions, you resolve those questions, you have a clear understanding of them, that will protect you from losing your inner chiyos with Hashem and you can retain the relationship. Yes, Shara Koa. Rabbi, Rabbi, 
Okay. Yeah. 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 Whoever wants to stay and ask questions can stay. Otherwise, have a good Shabbos. Yeah, I'm with you, Eli. Um, don't we say that we, we said we said something in the middle that Rabbeinu Yoma says that Hashem judges a person based off their mindset where they want to be. It doesn't the Gemara also say that by Yishmal, Hakadosh Baruch Hu judged them by Asher Husham. And I think the Gemara says that, that every person Hashem doesn't judge you by what you're, at least for bad, He doesn't judge you for what you're going to be, but it judges you by Asher Husham. That's an important question. That question is often brought up as a contradiction also between Yishma and between the Ben Sora and More. Right. But also by the Ben Sora and More, it also says that you're judged based on the future. Right? We see that in the future he's going to be doing misbehaving and therefore we kill him now. You hear that? The Rosh Hashiva Zatzal, Rav Goldvich, would often bring that question in, in his Elul Drosha. Do you want to ask anything more, Eli, or can I address it? The, um, I was going to ask like a completely different question. But I, think, I think by the Ben Sora Mora, there's, there's a difference between Based in Shalmal and based in Shalmat, so. And by and by Yishmael's not. The meaning Yishmael. I was also talking about based in Shalmat, wasn't it? Shalmal was based in Shalmat. But so based in Shalmala, you judge him by Sher Husham. Right. And based in Shalmat, we judge him based in the future. Yeah. It I seems that way around, right? I mean, how how are we in this world supposed to know what's going to be in the future? In Shalmat, they know what's going to be in the future. That why we judge? You hear the. It's, it's a challenging point, right? So, Basher Husham is not a contradiction. Basher Husham means where you are in your Ratzon. It doesn't mean Basher Husham where you are in action. You're, you're correct in your analysis. Hashem judges you wherever you are in your Ratzon. And that's the Gemara in Kedushin. The Gemara in Kedushin says, if a person says, marry me on condition that I'm a Tzaddik, Gamor, even if you know a tzaddik, even if he's a Russia gamor, he's married. Why is he married? Maybe at that moment his heart is in tshuva. What do you mean by Sheru Sham? Where he is in his actions? So we answer, no, by Sheru Sham means where he is in his ratzon. Exactly as you're saying. Hakadosh Baruch who judges you when you're in a ratzon is at that moment, even if you haven't done tshuva for all the negative things that you've done, and even if you're still full of negativity in the actions. However, your ratzon, your desire is to be close to Hashem. Your desire is to be a tzaddik, but Asher Husham on your will answers HaKadosh Baruch Hu and says, yes, that's how I judge. It's perfect, beautiful. Rabbi? Yeah, Eli. Um, how does the idea of uh, not making sure not to connect to Rishayim, especially if they're like Jews, relate to a desire to like do Kirv, etc.? So that's, that's a very important point. The difference in Kiruv, when the people come to you with a perspective of, I want to learn, I'm interested in growing, and a perspective of, I have an agenda of telling you why what you're doing is wrong. We're talking here about a Russia. A Russia is someone who already understands the principles behind Torah on a basic level, and he has an agenda of going against it. He's a more. For there, we don't start opening up a connection with him and bonding with him. Kiruv works in the world of people who aren't, I don't have a clear understanding, when you relate to them, they are interested in having a conversation with you. In order to connect to someone who's a morid, you have to be, act with him with a harshness, but not with a kindness. When you act as someone who's a morid in a kind way, then he just wraps you in around his understanding and you lose. So someone who's acting in a harsh way as a Russia and going against Hashem, with him you have to act in a harsh way as well. How that plays out for the Maisa is not between this conversation now, but the world of Kirov generally doesn't relate to those people. The world of the Kirov generally doesn't go out to find the people who are Dafka against and Dafka anti. The world of the is going out usually to people who are less knowledgeable to enable them to understand a clearer understanding in more depth of what a Kodesh Baruch's world is. Rabbi, can I have to just, just to clarify from before, um, how, how do we know that Ra was worse than... How do you, how do you know that... that um, Russia was worse than Ra. Is he still there? Oh, shit, we lost him. I think Rebbe left, but um, he quoted a Gemara in. Uh, one second, first of all, let me just stop.